Hey everybody and welcome to another Chairman of the Board Top 10 video. Today we'll be talking about my top 10 games that sound terrible on paper but are actually pretty fun to play. So while these games might not be the best games ever, they're certainly way better than they have any right to be. Now before I get started on these 10 games, I want to give a shout out to the show's sponsor, kienda.co.uk, who are my go-to online retailer. And if you use the link in the show notes or the QR code, then you can get 5% off your first order. At number 10, I have Concept. Now Concept is essentially a game of charades, but instead of acting out your clues to help your teammates guess the answer, you are using a predefined board which is covered in these different symbols, you know, such as you know, colours and you know, signs and symbology and stuff. And you're using these markers to try and help communicate what the answer could be. Now, going into the game, I thought that was going to be way too restrictive and the limitations were just going to be too much and would really hamper your creativity. But after playing this quite a few times now, I kind of never fail to be impressed about how creative you can be and how intelligently you can use those markers to again, communicate what you're trying to get across. So don't write this one off um, if you think you're going to be get pigeonholed into giving these clues. So again, I thought it was going to be really bad going into it, but it ended up being a lot of fun. And again, the, the board did a great job of giving the options and different ways to use those clues to portray those messages. At number nine, I have Illusion. So Illusion is a small box card game where you are simply trying to place these cards in order and um, based on a certain color uh, on those cards. So essentially you're trying to work out the percentage of each color on each of these cards, but the twist is that these cards have um, optical illusions on them. So you can't quite work out with any accuracy about what percentage each of these cards has in terms of their color coverage. And it's always quite interesting to see you know, being sure that maybe the red is the dominant colour on this certain card, where in reality it's green um, and you know your brain just plays this, these tricks um, on you. But the gameplay is so simple, you're playing almost like a, a timeline style game where each turn you can either draw a card and try to place it in order, like you know, in, the, in the correct order in terms of the percentage on those cards. Or you can try and challenge the person who's played a card in front of you saying, you know what, I think you've played that card in the wrong order. If I'm correct to challenge, then I will gain some points. And if, if I incorrectly challenge their, um, their placement, then they'll gain some points. So, you know, gameplay, it could not be more simple, but it's those illusions that really um, fascinated me. And, you know, sometimes you're really caught off guard and, you know, are surprised about how these cards have been arranged. Now, the game does make me feel a little bit nauseous, so I can only play it in small um, doses. But again, it's a nice one to play that you could truly play this game with anybody and they'll probably get some interest and some intrigue uh, out of it. So that is Illusion at number nine. At number eight, I have Spicy, which is a pure bluffing style game where you are going to be rewarded by shedding cards from your hand as well as challenging lies that other players have made. Now, these kind of games have been very hit or miss for me, generally missed for me in the past. So I was certainly dubious going in to this game, feeling that it was probably going to fall flat with my gaming group, where in reality, that could not be further from the truth. So gameplay wise, this is a super simple game where all you're going to do is you're going to be playing these cards face down on a communal stack, trying to increase the value or claiming, at least claiming to increase the value on the previously played card of a particular suit. So, for example, it might be a um, you know, pepper for the round. Some will play a three pepper card or claim to. And then you'd say five pepper, then seven pepper, then you know ten pepper. And then you're going to go back round to either one, two or three. But at any time, you can challenge either the number claimed or the suit claimed, i.e. The, you know, the, the salt, the pepper or the chilli. And if you are um, correct to challenge that particular suit or number, then you'll gain the whole stack of cards as points. Or if you're incorrect, the person who last played the card will gain that whole stack of cards as points at the end. Now, that is essentially what the game entails. But because the stakes really do rise in this game and how how frequently you could get away with bluffing. It really does become a very jovial experience, very high energy game that plays in around 10 minutes. So this game certainly doesn't outstay its welcome. It stays true to what it's trying to be. It's a hell of a lot of fun. And um, yeah, every time I've played this one, it's generally been a big hit. So certainly I think the gold standard of bluffing style games, that is spicy at number eight. 
At number seven, I have Marrakesh. Now, I'm not talking about the heavy Euro game by Steffenfeld. This is an older roll and move style game, believe it or not, where you are going to be doing just that, you know, rolling a die. You're going to be moving this communal pawn on this big grid. And wherever you land, you are going to be laying a piece of carpet of your colour. And as the game goes on and turn by turn, the board is going to get populated by more carpets. Um, should a player roll the die and land on a piece of carpet belonging to you or another player, then the player who's landed on that spot must pay an amount of coins equal to the coverage of that particular piece of carpet that you've just landed on. So if it's covering five squares, you're going to have to give them five coins. So not only are you playing this very simple roll and move style game, uh, you are trying to connect your carpets together to make sure that when somebody lands on that spot, you're going to get the jackpot. And you know you end up taking a bit of ownership of your carpet. Um, it's a little bit nasty at times as you're trying to cover other people's carpet up and build up these huge piles by, of overlapping carpet. And it's just a really fun little game to play, which again can be played by almost uh, anybody. And I like this additional touch where at the end of the game you are given points equal to the uh, the kind of the end. Um, layout of the carpet on the board so you know if you even if you're not lucky in terms of people landing on your carpet if you've got a huge coverage on the board you're still going to do quite well out of this one it is hugely luck dependent but it's way more fun than it should be and it is truly a roll and move style game so that is Marrakesh at number seven at number six I have Trio also known as Nana now this is pretty much a pure memory style game where you know, a bit like spicy and bluffing style games, you know, memory games are something I generally steer well away from because it's just a, a function of a game that I do not tend to enjoy or be good at. But for some reason, it works really well in Trio. Now, this game it actually isn't too far away from your traditional memory puzzle where you know, you're flipping tiles over and trying to get pairs. This one, however, each player is going to have a number of cards in their hand with these numbers on them. I'm going from low to high. And on your turn, you are simply asking these players to reveal either the highest card or the lowest card in their hand, hopefully trying to get you know, sets of three and gaining points. You know, the first to get, I think it's three trios or the first player to get um, all the sevens will instantly uh, win the game. But I do like the way that instead of having you know, a communal display of cards, and just go completely in blind each each turn, you know that the cards that people are holding are either going to be on the lower end of the spectrum or the higher end of the spectrum. So you are somewhat restrained in what you are going to find in this player's hand, which makes the game move at a lot faster pace. Um, I do like the way that you know the more you're asking questions, the more information is being drip fed. And as I said, generally speaking, I'm not a fan of memory at all, but it does come through really well here. It's a punchy game. It only takes around 10 minutes to play. So it certainly does not outstay its welcome. And you know, even if you don't like memory games, I think you might get something out of this one. And it feels like a traditional card game that anybody can get into. So that is Trio at number six. At number five, I have The Number. So this is a somewhat controversial game because people may argue that this isn't even a game uh, at all. Uh, but what you're doing is you are writing a three-digit number on a dry erase board and then simultaneously revealing that number with all the players and then stacking them in numerical order going from low to high. Now, if you um, write a number that has a duplicate to anybody else um, below you, then you are going to be disqualified from scoring that round. So you, know, you want to be making sure that you're writing a somewhat high number to guarantee yourself some high points, but you don't want to have any duplicate digits. And if you end up scoring, then those particular digits that you've used that round will no longer be available to you in future rounds. So as the game progresses, you've got an idea about what other people might be going for. And um, you can even use that to your advantage in terms of blocking them from scoring at all. And um, you're even encouraged to go for higher numbers because you're going to get a bonus for taking out a huge gamble and it paying off. Um, it's a wonderfully simple game. Um, it's actually one of my favourite games on this list. And um, I think it's actually quite overlooked and, um, you know, sometimes looked down upon as not being a game at all, as I mentioned, where I think the actual decisions here are quite interesting, especially as the game develops. That risk reward thing really does shine through. And there's even some good rewards and incentives in terms of diversifying in your numbers because you're going to get some bonus points by ticking off as many different digits as you can, which will box you into a corner 
but it is a different strategy that you can go. I think it's a game that's either going to be a hit or miss for your game group. Some people, people are going to find it difficult to extract any fun from this one, but I personally really do enjoy it, and um, I'm certainly, you know, I love having it in my collection. So that is the number at number five. At number four, I have Cabo. Now, Cabo is another memory style game where at the start of each round, you are going to have four cards in front of you um, face down, and you can only look at two of those cards. Now, the general concept is that you are trying to get those cards as low as possible by you know, drawing cards and replacing the existing ones, or swapping them, or you know, spying on other people's cards, or looking at your own cards, you know, these kind of things. But the twist on this one is that when you're relatively confident that you have the lowest arrangement of cards, you can call Cabo and then each player will have one more turn except for yourself and then all the cards will be revealed. And if you have successfully guessed that you have the least amount of cards or the lowest value of cards in front of you, then you will score zero points and everybody else will score points equal to what's in front of them. However, the objective of this game is to have as few points as possible and by the time somebody gets to 100 points. So it is that gamble because you know if you successfully guess Cabo and you have the least, you're going to score nothing. But if you unsuccessfully call Cabo, then you're going to score some extra points, which is actually a bad thing. There's also some additional twists that you can do here, such as shoot the moon mechanisms um, or even... If you land exactly on 100 points, which I've seen done many times, you're going to revert back to 50 points and being a lot better footing in order to win uh, the game. So sometimes it's even incentivized to take those high valued cards so that um, you know, people might steal them off you or you want to hit a particular um, score marker to get reset to the 50 points. Uh, really enjoyable game and uh, one that, again, it should not work, but every time I've played this game, it's been a tremendous hit and I've played this with many, many different people, and I've never had a single bad game of Cabo. So I actually really rate this one, and I'm, you know, I probably shouldn't do it on paper. So that is Cabo at number four. At number three, I have Unusual Suspects. Now, this is another party-style game. It's a cooperative game where one player is going to secretly know one character from this arrangement of other characters made up of these cards um, and each round they're going to be get given um, questions to try and help the other players um, deduce who this particular character could be so for example you might get given a card saying something like you know, does this character like you know, sci-fi films and the person in the hot seat will either say yes or no and all the other players must discuss amongst each other which characters can be eliminated from the fold in order to progress to the next round, hopefully safely, without finding that particular character. Um, but the conversations that come from these questions are actually really uh, interesting. It, yeah, it's somewhat judgmental of a game uh, based on people's appearances, but it does create some really interesting um, discussions and observations. And the way that people perceive these characters in different ways is, is always really interesting. So again, on paper, I thought this game sounded absolutely terrible. I thought it was going to be very flat and not really have anything interesting to discuss at all. Where each time I've played this one, it's been really fun and had some really interesting discussion discussions come off the back of it. It's not a game you can play all the time. It's, you know, it's probably a, a once or twice a year style game because you're going to be rehashing conversations otherwise. But it does what it does exceptionally well. And for a design by Paolo Mori, who's generally known for his more kind of um, deterministic strategy style games, this is something completely different and it, and it works way better than it should do. So definitely an event style game when you have higher player counts, but it's an absolute blast to play. So that is Unusual Suspects at number three. At number two, I have The Mind. So The Mind is the game that actually popped into my mind immediately when I decided to make uh, this list. It's not number one, uh, because another game has come along since then that I think even trumps uh, this one. But The Mind is another game that is very controversial, a bit like The Number. There's a lot of discussion out there you know, saying, is this a game or is this not a game? But you know, from my experience, this is a lot of fun. I've had some good times with it and actually had a lot of plays out of this one. So it's another cooperative game where you are trying to shed cards from your hand in numerical order. But all the cards are, of course, divvied out randomly amongst the players 
Um, so, for example, I could have the 3 and then the 9 and then the 28 and so on, whereas my teammate could have anything up to, I think it's number uh, 100. And then all you're trying to do is that you're trying to play these cards in order without discussing anything uh, at all. So it really is a game about intuition. Um, it's a game about timing and just going on your gut reaction because there's not every card in the mix. Sometimes you have to take these huge leap of faiths and there will be stalemates at time where, you know, someone might have the, uh, you know, 28, someone might have the 29 and it's going to jump up from 17. You know, do I go? Do I not go? And so on. But you want to be trying to go through these cards without making any uh, mistakes. You do get some lifelines and some different tricks you can do in order to get past difficult moments. But I really do love the arc of this game where you start with just you know, one card each and you go up to two cards each or they're up to you know, like tons of cards each. And the synchronicity that you get in with your teammates is quite interesting um, because you get this kind of free flowing um, gameplay style that just wasn't there when you started with the same group. So definitely a game that rewards investment with the same game group and when you start to get into the flow of things and start to read each other's body languages and just get you know, just get a feel of the way that people think. So I think this game has its shelf life, don't get me wrong, I've played it a lot but now I've played it to I think I played through all the scenarios and beyond that and managed to complete it. I feel like I'm done with it, but I do think you'll be doing yourself a bit of a disservice if you don't at least give this one a try. So maybe about five years or so ago, this game was really hot and everyone was enjoying it and playing it all the time. Not so much anymore, but I think it's one of those games that it's like a bucket list style game where I think you need to at least try it out. So that is The Mind at number two. And finally, at number one, I have Dro Poulter. So this is actually a game that I acquired pretty recently. And after reading the rulebook, I was prepared to give this game a one out of 10 because I thought it sounded absolutely terrible. Uh, that was not the case. It's actually so much fun and it still remains in my collection uh, to this day. But this is a dexterity style game, which is something I normally um, hate. I don't, can't think of many games at all that I like with the dexterity genre. But this one you are trying to drop specified items from the palm of your hand and then grab this ghost token. Now, that's pretty much the rules. So the uh, a card is revealed, it might say you want to drop this shell, you want to drop the ring, and you want to drop the key. And then everyone is using one hand to try and drop those particular items and then grab that ghost before the other players do. If you do that successfully and quicker than the other players, then you will get a bell and it's going to be a race to get to five bells. This game has one of the coolest catch-up mechanisms that I've ever seen, which is that not only are the bells your points, but each round the bells will remain in your hand, making it much more difficult for you to drop those specified items. And on top of that, if you drop a bell, you are essentially throwing your points away because you are, you've lost that bell for the remainder and will have to re-earn it. So I love that catch-up mechanism. It's such a clever little twist. Um, and, you know, you can have some very tense moments here. It's all about trying to keep your cool, but still obviously having some degree of haste um, to your actions. Um, again, I was very much prepared to hate on this game, and I just couldn't do it. You know, every time I play this one, it's gone down well. It's so bad that it's good, and um, yeah, just a perfectly tailor-made for a list like this. So, as I said, going into this list, I was prepared to give the mind the number one spot, but Dro Pulsar came along and knocked everything else down. So that is Dro Poulter at number one. So there we have it. That concludes the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and it's something a little bit different um, to what I normally do. Now, if you have enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other content too. And let me know your suggestions that would be a good fit for a list uh, like this. But for everybody else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye-bye.